Hey everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today we're going to look at an RC circuit. We're going to look at the charging of a capacitor when I close the switch in a circuit like this. So I've drawn the circuit here over uh, on the whiteboard and basically what we have is a EMF, so a power supply. In this case, let's consider a 9 volt power supply. I'm going to have one resistor uh, which is in series with a capacitor. And then there's gonna be a switch that I'm gonna close at time zero. And my goal is to be, to look at a few things. Number one, what is the voltage across that capacitor? Uh, initially it is not charged, so the voltage is zero. Uh, but after I close the switch, it's going to start charging up. So let's see if we can get a mathematical expression for the voltage across that capacitor. I also wanna look at the charge across the capacitor. And lastly, I wanna look at the current as a function of time. Okay, so let's go ahead, set up our Kirchhoff loop rule, and I'll show you the steps to solve for the voltage, current, and charge on the capacitor. All right, let's get started. Again, remember, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, okay, so to get things started, what I'm gonna do here is that at time equals to zero, I'm gonna close this switch over here. Now, initially, my capacitor had no charge on it, and if you remember, uh, this basic relationship that tells you the charge on the plates versus the voltage across the plates. It's our capacitor equation right here. And I'm going to put a little C here just to remind myself that this is really the voltage across the capacitor plates. So at time equals to zero, if this is zero, that can only be true if the voltage across the capacitor is zero. Okay, so you have to have this again at time zero. And then what happens? Well, it's going to start charging up. All right, what we're going to do now is we're going to apply uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law to this circuit over here. So if the voltage drop across the capacitor is initially zero, um, well, this becomes very, very simple. So let's go ahead and do it. So let's do the loop uh, A, B, C, and D, and then go back to A. Okay, so I start over here. The first thing I encounter is my EMF. So I have this. Uh, the next thing I encounter is a resistor. And I'm going to assume here that the initial current is going to go in this direction. Okay, so that means I would have a voltage drop across that resistor. And the voltage drop would be given by Ohm's law. It's the current multiplied by the value of the resistance. Okay, now I'm at point C. The next thing I'm going to cross is the capacitor. So I'm going to have a voltage drop across that capacitor. And then that's it. I go back to where I started. So Kirchhoff's uh, voltage law says that must be equal to zero. You add all the voltages across all the elements. If you do one complete loop, you have to go back and that equals to zero. Okay, so remember at time zero, what do we have? At time zero, this guy's equal to zero. So that means that my... <laughs> A loop rule over here is very, very straightforward. It means that my initial current, right, if Vc is equal to zero, that term goes away, that the initial current here is simply the EMF divided by the resistance. It behaves as though the capacitor is not even there. So let me just note that this is really just the initial current that I'm going to get. The current's going to get smaller as a function of time, but initially it's okay. Initially, this is I get quite a lot of current when I first close the switch. Okay, so this is really, I'm going to call this even I0, just to remind myself that it's the initial current. All right, what we're going to do now is, let's go back to our equation one over here, which is our uh, Kirchhoff's uh, voltage law. And now we're going to see how we can actually obtain, we're interested in two things. What is the voltage of the capacitor as a function of time? And what is the current now as a function of time? I know what the value at time zero is, but what is the rest of it? So let's go ahead and uh, do a little bit of calculus to find that out. All right, so we start off with Kirchhoff's voltage law, which I wrote over here, equation one. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do here is, again, remember for any capacitor, we always have this proportionality, okay? What I'm going to do here is I'm going to eliminate VC and introduce uh, the charge on the plates and the capacitor, okay? So with this... These first two terms end up being identical. And instead of having VC, I'm simply going to have Q over C over here. All right, next thing I want to do now is I want to have current all by itself. So that means I can bring this term on the other side, and then you have to divide through by the resistance. And so if I do that, what I'm going to have left is uh, the EMF over the resistance. And the other term is simply going to be this charge Q. And I'm going to have this term over here. All right, this is a really important equation, so make sure you get this one. 
Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to introduce a definition of this current. Okay? Uh, the current, by definition, you can write in terms of the charge. It's the rate of change of the charge with respect to time. Okay. And then well, let's just rewrite all the rest of the terms. All right, what we're going to do now is we're going to do a little bit of trickery here. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this term, and I'm going to factor out uh, this term right here. I want the charge Q to be by itself, and I'm going to do that because it's going to make the integration a little bit better. So I've got this first term right here, and for the second term to work out, I would factored out an extra capacitance term, so I need to have C multiplied by the EMF. Okay, you can see if you multiply through this first term, um, it's going to end up being equal to equation two right here. So make sure you understand this step. This is really critical. All right, the next really important step now is I'm going to bring all the terms with charge on one side and all the other terms on the other side. So let's go do that over here. Um, so what we have here is dq. And now if I bring the term with the charge, I'm going to bring the entire bracket over on this side. This is q divided by the capacitance multiplied by the EMF. Let's put a bracket around that. And now the next term here on the right-hand side, I'm going to bring the dt over here, and I still have all this term here in the green bracket. So this becomes negative dt, and all that gets divided by rc. All right, now follow me here. If you can get up to this equation, you've pretty much done all of the work. Unfortunately, now we do have a little bit of calculus here. So what I want to do now is I'm going to do a change of variable, and this I can do. Um, this is just going to be an integration variable. And what I want to do now is I want to integrate on both sides of this expression. Okay. For the time, for this side here, the right-hand side, I'm going to integrate from 0 all the way to some time t. Okay. Now at time 0, I said we didn't have any charge on the plates. So that means that on this side, on the left-hand side, I'm integrating over charge. So I know initially I have 0 charge. And at some time later, at some time t, I'm going to have a certain amount of charge q on the plates. All right, now all we have to do is evaluate this expression right here. So let's go on the next slide. I'll show you how to do that. All right, this integration is pretty straightforward. Uh, the right-hand side is really easy because this is simply minus t prime over rc. And again, I'm just evaluating that between the limits of 0 and t. So this guy simply becomes minus t over rc. Uh, the left-hand side over here is also pretty straightforward if you've kind of done a little bit of calculus. Uh, this guy here is simply equal to the natural log of the term in the bracket, which is q prime minus the second term. And again, this has to be evaluated between both of those limits. Now you have to substitute q prime for Q and then for zero, right? And you end up taking a difference between those terms. At the end, if you use the properties of logarithms, this here simply becomes the first term when Q is substituted inside. And the second term, I end up subtracting it. So using properties of the log, you can write that as a ratio. And it's the second term when Q is Q prime here is substituted with zero. So here you get minus C multiplied by the EMF. All right, my goal at the end is to get Q by itself. So what I want to do now is I want to take the exponential of both sides. And if I do that, then the left-hand side simply becomes this, right? Simply get rid of that natural log term. And now this whole term here becomes exponential and of everything on the right-hand side, just like this. So now you simply have to do a little bit of math. You bring this negative C times the EMF on the other side. And then you bring this other term on the other side. So at the end, you end up getting this. C multiplied by the EMF. And this becomes 1 minus exponential of this entire term here. Minus T over RC. All right, this is really the end result that we are looking for here. Now we have to analyze this in a little bit more detail and make some sketches of what this function looks like. All right, first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at, um, remember our capacitor equation, right? The capacitor equation is this one right here. It says that the charge equals the capacitance times the voltage. Well, right here we have the charge equals to the capacitance. That means that everything that's left over over here on this side has to be 
the voltage across the capacitor. And that's the voltage across the capacitor as a function of time, right? Then this is what we have. Q of T equals to C multiplied by V of T. So that means that the voltage across the capacitor is this expression here. It's the EMF of the battery and one minus EXP of minus T over RC. All right, so far so good. The next term I wanna look at is this term over here in the denominator. It appears in both expressions. Okay. This here is what we define here as the RC time constant. Okay, so just by its name, it means that the product of resistance and capacitance has to have units of time. Okay. Because you can't have any units for anything appearing in an exponential function. So if the numerator here is measured in time, that means the denominator, since I'm dividing by it, has to also be in units of time, okay? So if we would have a look at our particular circuit over here, what would be the RC time constant for this uh, circuit? That means our resistance is 1,000 ohms and multiplied by our capacitance, which is uh, 6 microfarad, okay? 6 times... 10 to the negative six microfarad. That means at the end, what we end up is getting six times 10 to the negative three seconds. Um, that's actually equal to six milliseconds. Okay, so that would be the RC time constant for this simple circuit. All right, so what does the sketch look like for this function? To plot it, let's first consider this table over here. So I've written some times over here. So zero, uh, six milliseconds, 12 and 30, for example. Uh, six milliseconds was our time constant tau. This would be two times the time constant and five times, for example. And let's look at these different terms. So the charge and the voltage both have this exponential term. So at time zero, uh, if I substitute t equals to zero here, I'm gonna have one uh, for that exponential term. And if I do one minus this exponential term, well, that means I would have zero, right? So if I go ahead and plot this, that means that, and again here, I'm gonna plot the voltage and I'll just divide by the um, EMF of the battery. Let's put EMF over here. All right, at six milliseconds, uh, this term here simply becomes uh, exponential of negative one because my time is equal to the time constant. And if you substitute that number in your calculator, you get 0 0.368 approximately. So if I do one minus that value, I should get uh, 632, okay? So that means if this is the 50% mark, I'm a little bit higher than that, right? After six milliseconds, I have 63.2% of the maximum voltage that I'm going to reach. All right, how about the next term? So this here would be exponential of negative two. Um, and this guy here gives me 0 0.135. Uh, so one minus this number here would give me 0 0.865. So that means I've, you know, I'm getting close to the maximum value that I'm going to get at time equals to two times my time constant. At 30 milliseconds here, this term becomes exponential of minus five, which is actually a really small number. It's 6.7 multiplied times 10 to the negative three. And that's after 30 milliseconds. If I do one minus that value to get my voltage, I get 0 0.9933. I've almost reached the maximum that I'm going to reach. All right, let's put this value over here. This is kind of a limiting case. And that means after time equals to five, right down over here, I'm basically right at the maximum that I'm going to reach. If I go ahead now and I kind of plot that, if I connect it, I'm gonna get a curve that looks like this. I eventually will reach the EMF, okay? At time, as time gets really, really big, this second term here, which you could see is tends towards zero. For example, if I do 100 times uh, the time constant, I basically get something that's very close to zero. And the voltage that I'm going to get across the capacitance divided by uh, the EMF of the battery tends to be equal to one. So I eventually reach this term. All right, so that's pretty good. That's what the sketch looks like uh, for this given value. Uh, the other thing you might ask yourself is what does the charge as a function of time look like? Well, the charge as a function of time is going to look the exact same, except I have to change the units. Uh, the saturation value this, uh, that I'm going to reach after a long period of time is whatever is in the front over here, 
right? It's going to be the capacitance multiplied by the EMF. So if instead I was plotting the charge, this is what it would be. Capacitance multiplied by the EMF, this is what I'm going to eventually reach after a long period of time, right? The plot, the functional form looks exactly the same. All right, we have one more thing to look at, which is the current. So let's go back now to our current equation and see how we can figure out what that curve looks like. Okay, so to get the current as a function of time, you just have to remember the definition. If you know this guy, the charge as a function of time, all you have to do is differentiate that with respect to time, and you're going to get the current. So there's two terms over here if you multiply this through. And the first term is simply a constant. So if I take the derivative, that simply equals to zero. Uh, the second term looks like this. It'll be negative CE. And again, now I have to take the derivative of an exponential, which is also an exponential. And then you have to use the chain rule to take the derivative of the inside, which is minus one over RC. All right, you gotta simplify that a little bit. This negative sign will cancel with that one. This capacitance will cancel with that one. And the last step now, just group together all the terms. You have the EMF. You still have a resistance term to have the right units. And then you simply have an exponential decaying function. Okay, That is what the current as a function of time looks like uh, for this capacitor. So notice here, if I substitute time equals to zero in here, the exponential term is simply equals to one. Right? Actually, this whole second column is basically the current as a function of time divided by my initial current, I0. Okay. Actually, the initial current, you can see that previous value that we had, uh, the first thing I did is actually right here. This is the definition of at time equals to zero, this is my initial current. So I can go ahead and put that on the plot right here. This is the EMF divided by the resistance. Right? When you first close the switch, I get a lot of current. Uh, after six milliseconds, I'm right over here, I'm left with 0.368, right? So if this is half, I'm actually only have this much current left. After 12 milliseconds, I actually only have 13.5% left of my current value, so it's really small. At five times, I only have a little bit of current left. Okay, so this here simply looks like a decaying exponential. Should be a plot that looks something like this for the current. Okay, anyway, we looked at the charge, we looked at the voltage, and now we looked at the current. Hopefully you understand the steps. And we also looked at this RC time constant. Okay, that's really an important parameter in quantifying how fast or how slow a capacitor will charge and discharge. All right, thanks for watching, folks.